Hello and welcome back again to the CCTV IP Academy. Um, in this episode, I'll try and give you a brief overview of digital network CCTV systems, the concepts and different uh, designs. Of course, digital IP CCTV is now possible. Larger systems are being done and they are possible. Uh, the concepts, in theory, have been proven working correctly in practice. But you as a CCTV user or digital CCTV designer have to be aware of certain limitations that the digital CCTV system has, like any other system. Um, first and foremost, important is that once we convert the analog system to digital, the data stream that goes to a particular location for storage, for example, like a digital video recorder or network video recorder, uh, needs to go through a network which has got certain limitations. First and foremost, the bandwidth, uh, which is basically dictated by the speed. Uh, then also the distances. And of course, there are different solutions for different applications. Most common, uh, as you, most of you know, uh, copper connections, CAT5 and CAT6 for, for larger, uh, for smaller to larger systems, medium-sized large systems. Of course, for more, much bigger systems where distances may need to go over a couple hundred meters, fiber optics, digital network solutions. The most important part of, of all that concept is to understand where do we put the recorders uh, in that system. So I'm going to try and explain these two basic different concepts. One of them is the so-called centralized storage concept, the other distributed storage system and you will see which one is better and why. Let's now see with some simplified drawings the difference between the centralized and distributed storage. Uh, on this uh, simplified drawing on the left, I have a representation of a network where IP cameras or streamers are connected on the network and then via the network they go to a centralized storage. Uh, that means all the traffic that comes from each of these has to go through a, a particular network pipe which has to have sufficient bandwidth to handle all the traffic without any losses when it goes to the storage. And in addition to that, the operator, when it calls up for any live footage or recorded footage from the storage area, has to go through the same network. So you can imagine then this particular area here connecting to the storage network connection will have to handle quite a lot of data traffic. Uh, the distributed architecture, which is shown on this second uh, simplified drawing, is slightly different. That means that each camera, or IP streamer can be in this case, is actually storing first directly onto their own local IP uh, storage. Then the network connection uh, allows all of them to be available for the operator. So the, the key difference here is that the operator is only going to need the traffic here as many uh, viewing stations or monitors he has at that time. So quite clearly you can see that if we have an example of let's say a typical uh, reasonable size system of thousand cameras, if we assume a typical uh, streaming rate of one megabit per second, which is not uh, unrealistic, you could have two or three or, or even less, uh, but if we have 1,000 cameras just for the recording itself with the centralized storage, we will require one gigabits per second. This is constant uh, bandwidth required at that without uh, con considering the actual overhead losses that every network has. Uh, if we add to it 10 operators and we assume that, let's say, there are two monitors for each of the operators, that's another 20 megabits per second that you require in such a system. So as you can see, you need to have more than one gigabits per second constantly available for the traffic to be uh, recording all the cameras and to be able to play back all the cameras. Using the same example, if we go to the actual uh, distributor storage uh, example, as you can see here, because all the cameras are recording on the periphery of the network, even if they're at one megabit per second even higher, there is no uh, effect, effect on the actual network. Only the 10 operators using two monitors dictate what amount of bandwidth is required over there. So in the, using the same example as here, uh, if we have two monitors per operator, we only need about 20 megabits per second. And that is the conceptual big difference in uh, the distributed storage and the advantages are quite visible from, from this. 
So I hope uh, you understand the, the, these two different concepts and why distributed architecture is theoretically and practically a better solution. There are a few other reasons for going uh, with distributed architecture and that is obviously the availability of the network, the availability of the modules is much higher, so the actual percentage of uptime of the whole system is much, much higher. Um, it is possible to physically install the recorders or hard disks in one central room and still have distributed architecture uh, solution simply because uh, the graphics that uh, just explained refers to the network design concept. Physically, those devices can still be installed in a centralized location for cooling purposes, of course, and for security and maintenance by the CCTV IP guys. I hope you enjoyed this uh, episode and I hope to see you again in the very near future.